We turn now to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. And coming to him, that is to Christ Jesus, as to a living stone rejected by men, but choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. Peter says here that we are to come to Christ Jesus as one who was rejected by men, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. In the previous verses of chapter 2, he was speaking about our individual responsibility of coming to the Lord to drink of the pure, unadulterated milk of God's Word. God's Word is like milk that feeds the newborn babe. And as he grows up, there is in God's Word meat as well for the grown-up adult to grow up further into the fullness of the stature of Christ. But as different ones do this individually, God's desire is that he may build them all together into one spiritual house. Verse 5. And so Peter uses the illustration here of stones being put together to build this house. And the first stone that God has placed as a cornerstone in this house is Jesus Christ himself. It's a living stone, he says in verse 4, not a dead one. A living stone, and he says, you also, verse 5, as living stones are built up together with him to be a spiritual house. So Jesus Christ is part of this house, part of this new creation that God is building for his glory. And in verse 6 of 1 Peter 2, there is this Old Testament quotation from Isaiah 28, 16, where God says, Behold, I lay in Zion, and Zion is a picture of the church a choice stone or a chosen stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed or put to shame. And the word believe here means to commit oneself to, to yield oneself to completely. If you commit yourself completely to Christ, you will not be put to shame. But Peter says, this precious value is not for everybody. Not everyone appreciates this cornerstone as precious. You people do because your eyes have been opened to see the value of Christ, you who believe. But for those who disbelieve, this stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. That is also an Old Testament quotation from Psalm 118 and verse 22. And this refers to a tradition that when Solomon's temple was being built, they wanted a cornerstone to be the first stone laid in the corner of the temple building, which had to have perfect angles in all three dimensions, so that all the other stones vertically and horizontally, could be aligned to this cornerstone. And one particular stone, which they took at first, they rejected, thinking it was not good enough, and they tried many other stones, and finally had to come back to the first one that they rejected. And this is what is referred to in this Old Testament quotation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. And this is how it is with Jesus too. 
the Pharisees and scribes and the religious leaders of Jesus' day would not have him because he preached holiness, obedience to the word, humility, being a servant of others, perfect in love. These were what he spoke about, whereas the scribes and Pharisees were more interested in external ritual and the external traditions of their church. And so they rejected Jesus. But, as far as God is concerned, those whom religious leaders rejected, God says, He has appointed him to be the cornerstone for the church. Now the reason why they rejected him is mentioned in verse 8. He was a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Jesus Christ is a stone of stumbling. People stumbled over him. And he was a rock that caused offense to many religious people, even today. And who are the people who stumble? Who are the people who get offended? That's mentioned in the latter part of verse 8. They stumble because they are disobedient to the Word of God. We considered in an earlier study how much Peter speaks about obedience to the Word as the mark of being in the true grace of God. And here he speaks about those who are disobedient to the word. And he says to this doom they were appointed. If we are disobedient to the word of God, then there is a doom appointed for us. But it is not something predetermined by God. It's something that is a result of our disobedience. But it is those who are disobedient to the word of God in some area or another who are offended with Christ even today, who are offended with the message of the true grace of God. For example, if someone is seeking honor in religious circles, seeking honor in Christian circles, it's quite likely that he will be offended at the truth spoken of in the New Testament that Jesus was rejected by men. And who was the people who rejected Jesus? Not the political leaders or the business leaders, but the religious leaders. And the true followers of Jesus, even today, will be rejected by the vast majority of religious Christendom which does not believe in obedience to the word of God. Jesus was rejected by men, it says in verse 4, and it is to him we are to come. If we look at verse 4 carefully, it says so clearly, Come to him. You are coming to him who has been rejected by men. So we come to one who has been despised and rejected by people. And if we come to him, the result will be that if we are living stones, we will also be rejected and despised by the people who rejected and despised him. And as he was a stone of stumbling to people in his day, as we follow him in our day, we will be a stone of stumbling to religious Christian leaders and people even today, if we preach obedience. And wherever a false grace is preached, wherever people speak about justification by faith, which, just, which does not lead to obedience to the word, and therefore is a dead faith, as James says, then such people will be offended and will stumble and will reject those who preach obedience to the word of God. Jesus was rejected because he preached obedience to God's commandments. He preached that we were to partake of God's character and nature. And this is the message of the gospel even today. And we are to come to him as living stones to be built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. And as he was rejected, we shall be rejected. But as he was the cornerstone chosen and precious to God, if we align ourselves with him as the stones in a temple are aligned to the cornerstone, if we align our lives, in obedience to God as Jesus lived in obedience, then we shall find that we too 
are chosen and precious to God, even though rejected by men. And so we find the house God builds, even today, is rejected by men, not accepted by religious Christendom, but precious in His eyes.